What do you think, Benny? I guess he's not impressed. Well, we took the sidecar tub off so that I can get over to the engine and I'll be doing a few things with it here. And uh, so I guess I'll get started and set the camera up and see what I can show you. Anything, getting ready to pull the valve covers off and see what I find there. And set the valves. It occurs to me what we may be hearing on the right side is just a sticking valve. Uh, if it's sticking open, it would explain the uh, kind of lower compression result in slamming clothes under compression that would cause the knocking. And, um, you yeah, know, but I do want to get in there and look at it. That's what I'll be doing here in just a few minutes. So, uh, I got my helper over here somewhere hiding, Benny. And try to keep him from tearing too much up. And uh, like I said, we took the tub off so we can get over here. We'll also clean. We'll work on the tub a little bit. Uh, not sure what I'll do to it. Not worried about it right now. But uh, the adventure continues. All right, we're a little crowded in here, but I'm going to open up the valve covers. Set the gap. shouldn't be harmful up here, but I, I should have pulled this out and drained out. Uh, oh yeah, we got plenty of fuel in there. Ooh, yeah, strong fuel odor. If I'd have thought about it, I would have popped these, cracked these just to drain the oil out of them. Uh, the main place that's harmful is if it gets inside the cylinder. But uh, we had drained all that out, so it's not harmful. But That gives you an idea of what we found. Uh, it was just full of fuel, and you know, as long as your float valves are good, you can get away with leaving it on prime, uh, letting it sit, and coming back and checking it. But traveling cross country with it in the prime position, and the uh, uh, you know the floats bouncing up and down over time, it just allowed more and more fuel to run in here. And you see what we got. Ah, here we go. There we go. All right. It's beginning to think they didn't stamp this one. So if that is top dead center, we should have freely spinning push rod. <laughs> Thank you, Benny. They seem to be concentric when they spin. Always good. If you spin them and they wobble like they're bent, then you'll see them going back and forth. But uh, no, these look concentric. So, if I want to do this the right way, I need to back off the head bolts and then torque them back to 35 foot-pounds is uh, what I'm told is the proper torque for the head bolts and uh, then set my valve gaps just kind of back each one of these off Make sure we loosen them enough. It had to be too much, but enough that we're definitely less than 35. You don't want to over torque these. That would be a bad, bad deck. Bring it up to 25. Okay. Okay, that's 25. Bring it up to 30.
Okay, brought them all to 34. Don't ask me, I'm just uh, paranoid. Okay, brought them all to 34, no problem there. That's where I'm going to leave them. Wipe some of this excess oil and fuel off here. Check the gap. We get 05 in here pretty easy. I don't know that it's enough to. Yeah, five hangs. Frankly, I'm going to leave them at five if uh, four is. I'd rather the valves be a little loose than a little tight. You get them a little too tight and you've got uh, problems. Okay, we're going to adjust the front valve because it's a little loose. The back one I'm getting four and a half thousandths, uh, five thousandths is tight, four thousandths loose to fall out. I'm okay with that. Um, a little more gap than not. Uh, the front one we're going to adjust and the uh, push rod does spin freely. We're going to adjust it so that we can tighten it up a little bit. The way we do that is it takes a 13 on the outside to break the lock nut here. And the inside one is 10. But curiously, this... <laughs> This uh, nut has rust on it. Interesting. I'm going to turn this around so you can see here. Um, uh, it looks like rust to me. It comes off like rust. It's peculiar. I mean, if it dried out and it was sitting and that was the only rust prone area, the other one has just a little bit on it. But this one. It's like the whole head of it because the 10 millimeter wouldn't fit on until I scraped it off. So I'm going to clean that off with a little wire brush and uh, you know adjust the valves. I don't see any more rust in here anywhere. So that's kind of unusual. Okay, all I've done here is use the 13 on the outside, the 10 millimeter on the inside. I did clean the rust off and flushed it with a little oil to get any bits of rust and anything out. Um, but what I do is I loosen this up, I open up the gap, and then I put the 5,000s shim down in here. I just drop it in here and let it sit. Then I tighten this up and I keep moving the 5,000s until it's nice and tight. Uh, it won't fall out, but it's nice and tight. I get that tightened down, and it's kind of trial and error to sneak up on it. But I get it in position so that the 5,000s shim is tight. If I put it in there, it will not fall out. And I, I leave it so it's even hard to put the 5,000s in. But then the four, I put it in just like this. And it barely slides out from the weight of the pack here. Now, I, I've heard other descriptions on how to do it. You put it so the four will hang and the three will fall out. And that's fine. I, I'm happy with a um, little bit looser valves. Um, from everything that I understand and have read about them. And I, I think this is truly adjusted to about four and a half thousandths instead of four thousandths if, if you were to you know, get a micrometer in here and look at it. That's not out of spec, that's fine. And that's where I like to run my valves at. Uh, again, we've got a little bit of rust over here. I flushed out with oil to make sure when I cleaned it with a wire brush there's no little bits of rust laying around. Uh, if that wasn't rust, it was sure impersonating it very, very well. Just a little bit of surface rust right on those uh, nuts there. Um, just curious, it's not on anything else inside. So, uh, don't know what that means. If it's just a lower quality metal, um, don't know. But we're torqued back to 34. We got uh, four to four and a half thousandths gap on our valves here. We are top dead center. Both rods spin freely. Clean this out, wiped out the excess oil that was in here, and let it drain. I'll probably wipe it again, put the cap on, then I'm going to move to the other side and repeat the process. Okay, we got this side uh, sealed back up, valve cover back on. Um, I did clean out the inside, cleaned all the old swarf out of the valve cover, all the gunk. Didn't clean up the outside that much, just wiped it down. What is it, Ben? Just wiped it down to, uh, you know, get it back on there. We'll take them off and polish stuff later. Right now we're just trying to to prove everything's okay and get it running like I want it. So now I'm over here on the left. 
Thank you, Benny. Now we're over here on the left side. And um, see if I can open this up and see what we find over here. I kind of like not having the tub there. That's a lot easier than standing on your head leaning over the bike. I don't know. Yes, Benny. What is it? What is it, Ben Ben? Huh? What you want? I have a visitor over here trying to help me out here. What you want? Hmm? What you want? Hmm? What you want? I know, you're bored, aren't you? How could I tell? You're trying to climb in my lap. How could I tell you're bored? Well, let's crack this open and see what we got inside. It's like Christmas. It's like Christmas, Benny. We open this and see what happens. Yeah. We don't know what'll be in here. Oh yeah, plenty of oil draining out down there. Not as much as the other side. Well, nowhere near as much as the other side. I don't know if that's good or bad. Not a lot of oil on this side at all. Let's see. I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily a good or a bad thing, but there's not a lot over here. And these bolts, uh, they have a little bit of surface rust on them too. Not as bad as the left, but there is a little bit of surface rust on the adjusting bolts here. So it must just be the quality of that metal. All right, now one theory about the knocking on the right side. Uh, could be a sticky valve, a valve that's not closing and it's being forced closed. Uh, could be a valve that is simply not closing all the way and causing an odd sound. Could be. I suppose. What am I doing? I'm my gaff wrench, not the 12 millimeter. Uh, it's 4,000. So let's see what we got. Oh. Yep, I didn't get my top dead center on this side just yet. We got here spinning free, <laughs> spinning free. Good. Yeah, let's see what the gap looks like. Four in the exhaust valve is a loose fit. Ooh, tight fit. Oh, the intake valve is very, very tight. I'd say that might even be two thousands. Tight there. So, Benny is indicating that he wishes to go for a walk. So I shall take him for a walk and resume this when I return. In the meantime, just cover this up so it doesn't collect any dust. In case I don't get back as soon as I think I will. And take Benny for his walk. Okay, I thought maybe you'd be able to see better from that side. Uh, maybe Benny will let us finish here. Uh, both rods spin freely, don't appear to be under any pressure. So that should be where we need to adjust our valves at. I know the intake valve is awful tight. The exhaust valve seems a little loose, but uh, first thing we're going to do is torque the head bolts on here if we want to. So the first thing we're going to do is loosen those up. There we go. Back those off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to 20. Get them all up to 20. Get on there. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to jump up to 25. Actually, I'll go on up to 30. 
Yeah, I'm going up to 30 and then we'll put the last four pounds on. And now we're going to go on up to 34. 34, Benny. Thirty-four. All right. First, we'll get our lock nut off here. Open this right on up. Okay. So now I know that this way tightens the gap. Actually, feels about where I want it. Tighten that back using the 13 millimeter. A counter pressure on the push rod nut to make sure we don't tighten it. And now that worked out. That should be fairly tight. It is fairly tight. Actually, can be a little tighter. So, I'll just put that a little bit right there. Tighten that lock right on up. It seems to be holding it away. Yeah, I can't really do the same trick here because I, I can't get it clear to hang. But what I can do is put it in at the top, and it didn't go in there. What I can do is put it in at the top and let it push through. So if you can see at five thousandths, it's still a little loose. Do this again down there. Loosen this up. Tighten that a little bit more. Can't go far enough that way. No movement. No movement. Right. I want it, it's right there. There we go, nice and tight on five thousandths. Tight on five thousandths, and we'll take the four thousandth shim, which is in here somewhere, right there, and we'll see how four thousandths does. Now, this valve was very, very loose. Let's see, four thousandths if I let it go slides. So now we got 4,000 sliding, 5,000 tight, so I'm going to call that one good. And then this one was very tight. I can't even get a 4,000 in there. So let's loosen it. Start by doing that. And I just like to run them on out and, you know, see the gap. Make sure everything looks good there. Got it good. Push rod's good. Let's tighten this on up now. Get your fingers on there. There we go. And this one. There we go. We're tightening the stroke there. Let's take the 5,000 shim. Thousands. And they're nice and loose right now. Let's get 13 over here where I can get to it easier. And let's tighten the 
this on out. That there. Okay, a little too tight, not moving at all. It's tough getting the wrench in here in exactly the position that you want sometimes. Too loose, too loose. Right about there looks good, so we'll hold that there. Position, we'll tighten the lock nut down. As I tighten the lock nut, I'm lifting just a little bit on the other one to make sure we hold that position. And pretty tight, it's not falling out. Pretty tight. Let me make sure. Let me make sure I got this locked. Yeah, that's good. So we got that. And it's nice and tight. So now let's take a four thousandths and see what we got here. And we found the four thousandths one there. These things are to be marked better. Yeah, we're good. It falls through. So that's good. It's uh, it's not a complete free fall through. Like I said, minor gap to a little bit larger than four, like four and a half thousand. It's less than five, more than four. Put it that way. Now, on this side, since this is the mystery knock, I want to see these valves actually move around. One thing I want to see is, is one of the valves sticking. Now, it's possible that the valve is sticking and under compression it's being slammed closed, which um, you know, when we when we had it running that first time, that was just kind of preliminary to make sure it would run. After we made sure it was safe, uh, the knock would come and go. Uh, as the engine warmed up, it seemed to go away. So, I'm not sure what it is. But I'm going to run the uh, kickstart now that these are gapped and make sure both of these valves are moving like they should. Both of them are moving. I don't see any excess gap or sticking. So I think we're good. I'm going to say that's a lot of oil to get out of just the valve cover. Valve covers there. <laughs> you know, usually I just get a little drizzle. That, that's a lot of oil. And it's the old black smelly uh, gasoline soaked oil too. So it'd be good to get that out of there.